Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to my next project um, plane. So we're going to be working on this Excalibur, making a bunch of changes on it. But uh, welcome back to how to install a turbine engine. All right, guys. Now, while this is very specific to the KingTech 160 G4 engine that we're putting in this plane, um, many of the basic principles apply to any engine that you're going to install in an aircraft. And I'm going to try to keep this stuff as general as possible, just so it makes sense with any other brand of turbine as well. So ultimately guys, the best thing to do if you have any questions about your specific brand of turbine is definitely check the manual, the owner's manual. Um, if the owner's manual does not have uh, the answer you're looking for, check with the manufacturer and get an answer if you have any questions. Don't guess, don't wing it. But before we get any further guys, just a quick reminder, if you have come across my channel and you haven't done so already, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below, give the video a thumbs up. If you don't like the video, give it a thumbs down, but hit the thumbs down button two times. Works better that way. All right, so while having a really well-installed turbine is nice, it's really more about having something that's installed, that's well-installed, reliable, and you've done your best to make sure that your installation hasn't caused any problems. Now, any engine manufacturer can definitely have um, mechanical issues. I mean, these are mechanical electric devices. Um, they've got lots of working components in them. Um, if one part fails, generally the turbine will stop working. But ultimately, um, my goal, and hopefully your goal, when you install a turbine engine into an aircraft, you want to do it where everything, you, you want to do it where you've done everything possible to eliminate the potential of a failure based on the, uh, the items that you have control over. So guys, I did a review of this KingTech 160, um, and also I, this is the G4 engine, so the brand new engine. I also did a, a review video before this one of the 210 G4 as well too. Uh, there's links down below, so at the end of this video, feel free to click those, link, or click those links if you haven't seen the videos already, and uh, check out the reviews. During those reviews, I do run-ups of the engine, um, we test the, uh, the auto restart, so a lot of cool functions of the, uh, the KingTech G4 engines. All right guys, so, First thing we're going to do, take the canopy off. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna remove all the current components of the, uh, the current installed engine. And uh, we're gonna start from square one on this engine install as if it was essentially a brand new plane. All right guys, so just to uh, review what is currently installed on this plane, um, we've got a fairly old KingTech engine. I'm not sure what uh, model this is. Um, you guys will, if you're familiar with the KingTech lineup, you'll know. But uh, it's a fairly old 160 uh, Newton engine. Uh, works really well on this plane. One of the problems that uh, the owner of the plane doesn't like is the uh, the throttle response is extremely slow. And uh, the new KingTech uh, 160 uh, G4 has much faster throttle response compared to this engine. All right, so we're gonna take the engine out. Now I'm pretty sure that the rails should be fairly similar, but uh, that's gonna be something we're gonna talk about as well too. We've got uh, the, uh, the wires running forward uh, from the engine. We've got the uh, the fuel tubing, which we'll just take out. Now we've got two lines here. Um, that's one of the differences between this uh, this JetCat engine and the, the KingTech engine is uh, the amount of fuel lines. And the reason for that is the JetCat has the solenoids installed up here. The KingTech engine has the solenoids installed under the front cover. Now in their previous generations, they did this as well. But what that means is one fuel line that goes to the engine. So we're gonna take all the all that components out. We're gonna take the uh, solenoids out. The on-off valve we'll take out, but we'll reuse. Uh, we've got our fuel pump there. We'll talk a little bit about the UAT and also the uh, we'll go over the fuel um, fuel system in general as well too. 
And uh, But that's step number one, is we're gonna remove all of the current uh, turbine components out of this plane, and we will be starting from square one. So I'm going to uh, get that stuff out of the, uh, the plane, guys, and then we will talk about some considerations when installing a turbine into a new aircraft. And like I mentioned, that's how we're gonna treat this install is as if we were building this Excalibur and uh, the engine just showed up from the manufacturer and now we're ready to install it. So that's how we'll proceed with things. But um, I'll rip all this stuff out and uh, I'll get back to you. All right, so I made a post yesterday on Instagram and Facebook. I just wanna show you quickly the, the technology difference between old and new technology. So here is the two turbines put together. Uh, now, of course, both these turbines have the exact same amount of thrust. Uh, the weight is a little bit different. The King Tech is a, just a little bit lighter by about 120 grams. But you got to remember, too, that the solenoids are also in this turbine. They're not in this turbine. The solenoids for the jet cat are sitting right here. So that's the size difference, physical size difference on the engines. Very, very cool. And the other thing that's really impressive is just the stuff that needs to go in the plane. So this is all the stuff for the jet cat engine. This is all the stuff for the King Tech engine. That's it. That's the entire turbine, guys. So to me, that's a significant difference in stuff. You know, when you're planning out an older turbine, you have a lot more things to think about. Uh, there's a lot of, uh, like even the even the solenoids, you gotta position all that stuff. The ECUs are much bigger. And uh, so there's a lot more planning that has to go into the older turbines. The new ones are much more simple. Absolutely love them. All right, so the airframe has been stripped. Everything's out of it. Well, not everything's out of it, but everything uh, is opened up. Now, because we are doing this video um, in conjunction with the repair on this plane, um, when we actually get the turbine installed, it's not gonna be a super pretty installation um, because we're not 100% done yet on the rest of the plane. But anyways, okay, so a couple things to think about when you're putting together a new plane, installing a turbine. Uh, you've got a bunch of things like, number one, turbine position. Now this plane's quite simple because there's no tailpipe, but I will cover um, some of the tailpipe stuff with you. Um, but uh, nice and simple with, with the no tailpipe thing. Uh, we've got to figure out a few things. Number one, where does the ECU go? Or in this case, the data relay module. We have the fuel pump location. And then we also have cables as well. So with this King Tech engine, we've got three different cables. Number one, the longest cable here is the cable that goes from the ECU or data relay module to the side of the engine, right there. You've got the fuel pump cable, which is this one with the MPX connector. So that goes from the back of the fuel pump into the fuel pump uh, outlet. And then we've got the battery lead as well. So we have a few things to consider when we're looking at this uh, particular airplane and how this engine's gonna fit. All right guys, so let's do some quick mock-up stuff here and see how things are gonna work. Um, we'll just lay the engine in there. The engine, we have to do some modifications on the rails and I'll show you how obviously we're gonna do that. But basically we've got all the the distances and stuff to kind of figure out here. So here is our three items that we need, or our items we need to figure out where they're gonna go. So I'll just lay them in where I kind of think they would fit really well. So we have the fuel pump right here. We've got the ECU right here. And the first thing I want to check is just cable length. Now the, the cable from the ECU or, or data relay module to the, the turbine, that's no problem because we got lots of distance there. So not worried about that. Uh, we've got the battery cable. Okay, so I'm not really worried about this because we've got long leads on the, uh, on the new battery. So here's the, uh, the King Tech battery. 
right? We've got the long lead on there. So if we put the battery in the nose where it belongs, then we've got the uh, connector all the way back here. So really the battery cable is not a, uh, a problem either, uh, which is great. Uh, the only big one we have is, or only kind of important one is the uh, cable going from the ECU data relay module back to the engine. So in this case, this is the stock cable that comes with it. Um, I think they're about 24 inches in length. Now, if we were to plug this in to the engine, which is there, we have some nice holes in the airframe to run this cable through. So it's gonna be neatly placed like this. That would be very, very close to, uh, to fitting. Um, probably would fit, but instead of having the data relay module ECU here, and the reason I'm calling it both guys is because in this case it's a data relay module, in most engines it's called the ECU. But I'm just gonna take that and slide it back just a touch to right there. Now, that will fit for sure, because we've got extra cable there. Engine, we'll be probably putting the engine back just a little bit further in the airframe, because that new uh, engine's much shorter than the old uh, King uh, Jetcat one. So if we go with that kind of positioning of the equipment, we are good. So those are the things you want to think about when you're laying out your equipment. You know, you wouldn't want to just start installing stuff and oh crap, none of it's going to fit, right? Now, you can get longer cables um, going from the data relay module to the turbine. Uh, I think the other cable is almost maybe even more than twice the length of this one. So really it's a non-issue with, with most engine or most uh, airplanes. I mean, you might run into an issue where uh, you buy the longer cable and on a massive plane, it's not long enough, but that'd be pretty, pretty far fetched. So, all right. So the last thing I, I really want to touch on guys is um, with, with the location of the equipment. Now this, this plane's pretty simple because you've only got a limited space to put stuff, but you want to keep the, um, the the fuel tubing lengths really as short as possible, right? So, so in this case, we've got our um, bubble trap, which is right there, and our fuel pump right beside each other. So this is a great setup because this is the supply line going to the fuel pump, and it's extremely short. Now, something like my Tudor, the way this is set up is you've got the bubble trap sitting right here, okay? And the fuel pump is down here. So there's probably a good foot and a half, 18 inches-ish um, of tubing going from that bubble trap to the input of the fuel, um, fuel pump. So on the Tudor, uh, that used to be six millimeter line, um, but I actually switched it to eight millimeter line. Not that it made a difference, the six mil still works, but um, when I was chasing a bunch of fuel problem issues on this plane, I switched it to eight, eight millimeter to reduce any restrictions. So in the case of the Excalibur here, this is a really, really great setup because we're so short on the input um, of the, um, the fuel pump. So with the bubble traps, guys, you're gonna have generally three um, locations or, or fuel tubing outlets on the uh, the bubble traps. The middle one here is your um, feed for the fuel pump. So this is the one that's generally um, the one that works with the filter inside or the sock or whatever you're using. Uh, that's what that's for. Then you'll have two other outputs and um, this is going to be the feed from the main fuel tank. So the fuel tank or the fuel system feeds into the UAT right here. And then you've got your fill line, which is this little uh, little piece of Festo tubing. Okay, so those are the three outputs. Now there might be some UATs with more, there's lots of different designs, but this is the, the common standard bubble trap right here. Uh, works perfectly fine. Um, so the way the fuel tubing is gonna work here is we've got the, the uh, output on the UAT going to the input of the fuel pump, which is right here. Now on this new fuel pump setup, these are a six mil 
and a four mil. So they're already sized for you. On the older fuel pump styles, you're gonna find that they're both four millimeter uh, Festo outputs, barbed fittings. Now there's always a, a line or an arrow on the, uh, the fuel pump. So this would be the input, that would be the output because the arrow is going across that way, okay? But what you can do on the older fuel pumps, a little trick here, is you put a piece of four millimeter Festo on the input, cut it off right past the tip with a razor blade, and then you can slide your six mil over top of the four mil. So that's, uh, that's what I do with all of my older fuel pump installations and uh, works really well. So then in the, in the scenario of this, uh, this plane, we've got our output of the fuel pump right here, and that's gonna go to our filter, which the new King Tech filters are marked with an arrow, okay? Um, and then we're gonna have our on-off valve right here, or in this area, and then this one single tube, okay, goes back and goes to the input on the engine. There's only one fuel input on this engine. So I think it's a great layout with the way things are organized here. Now this matches the, the previous system, except that the, uh, the ECU on the previous system was down below the, the main tray here. But in this case, because we don't have all of this crap that's gonna be mounted up top, previously the, uh, the solenoid valves were mounted on top, we are going to put the, uh, the data relay module slash ECU on top here so we have nice access to it. All right guys, so some things to consider with uh, the turbine mounting on this particular plane is um, the Excaliburs come with all these blocks and the point of the blocks is to get the engine off of uh, contacting with the, uh, the rear former here. Um, so we've got the old setup. So there was, there's a blind nut on the bottom here and uh, this is how the JetCat engine mounted and we're going to kind of use this, but not really. So I left the blind nut in the front on both sides. And reason for that is obviously we want these blocks to be fastened to the hardwood rails uh, of the engine mounting. So that's in there just to keep the uh, block mounted. Uh, we're going to use the back blind nut and bolt um, and drill new holes for the engine. And then we'll probably just use a wood screw for the front or one of the, the holes on the engine. So some things to consider when you're mounting the engine. Um, some engines like the King Tex, you've got some adjustment with the rail. Okay, so that's a nice thing. But uh, when the engine's mounted and the plane's sitting in its, uh, in its startup configuration, you basically, most engines you want the label facing upwards or at the 12 o'clock. Um, you can adjust the engines and you can, you can twist them. Uh, check your owner's manual to see how much play you actually have off center. But the problem is that if you start twisting it off center or 180 degrees, you might run into starting issues. Generally, the turbines now, they start well no, uh, no matter what, but uh, that's just something to keep in mind is you want the, the label facing upwards, usually, okay? If we just roughly put the, uh, the turbine in here, uh, we've got a couple things that we need to do. First of all, it's not sitting down all the way. Okay, if you look right there, the bolt is contacting the uh, the side. This one is down all the way because we set that side in first. So we're gonna have to make a little indents just like the JetCat engine had for the, uh, the, the bolts and the nuts. Um, so that's one of the first things we have to do, but we wanna get this positioned well. So we are happy with the final position. So I think what I wanna do just so I, I'm in the wood, is I'm going to run it something like that, was my thinking. <clears throat> now we do have the holes in the, um, the actual fuselage here to access the old bolts. That's one thing that I would like to reuse if I can, but the problem is that if we do that, 
Uh, you know, it might work. I just want to make sure we have enough support with our, our mount that uh, we're not going to run into any issues. So if we do that, that's where we run into a bit of an issue because on this side right here, that bolt hole, we don't have any wood. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm not going to worry about reusing these old old holes, old access holes. I'm just going to start fresh. And initially, my first thought was to run the mount all the way back on the rails. And with the turbine like that, we're actually sticking out of the airframe, which is, is fine. But the old jet cat would have mounted something like that. So I think that's uh, a good position for it. Again, on this particular airframe, it really doesn't matter too much about positioning because we don't have a pipe to deal with. Okay, that's where the uh, the mounting or the distance adjustment on the rails is really nice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sand out the, uh, the mount and uh, that'll be the first step because then the engine will, will be able to drop into place and then we'll be able to work on getting the engine centered. All right, guys, we're just working on the engine install here, and I'm going to do my best to capture this as, as good as possible for you. So um, a lot of airplanes, you can visualize the turbine center, uh, maybe your pipes installed. You can take a, a cone or a cardboard tube and you can wrap it around the pipe and you can look back on the pipe and find center and things like that. But on a plane like this, we don't have a pipe to deal with, right? So we have to find a way to either center it on the rails, which is hard because you don't have a fixed surface. Um, we can use a carbon rod. And you know, maybe that works and that gives us something to, uh, to go on. Anyways, we can use the engine rails. Okay, so right now we're lined up to the engine rails. Let's see how it measures up elsewhere. So other thing you can do is you could take a carbon rod like this. Okay, put it across the tail cone and then we can measure to fixed points like the very outside edge of the airframe. Okay, so let's do that and see what we come up with. Check the other side, and we're way off. Okay, so I'm going to do this a little bit different way. I'm going to actually put the Allen key on the edge, put my finger on there, and we'll transfer that over to the same side. So we're, we're quite far off, so we're actually more than the arrow width off. So now if I take this engine and move it this way, Now let's see how that works out. There, so I have one bolt in the engine and I'm just pivoting the engine. But uh, if I pull this side all the way back, according to this back section, that actually lines up well. I'm just going to tighten that bolt down. <clears throat> okay, so we'll double check that. Yep, using the calipers, it works out well. Now, and that's assuming that this molding on the, the fuselage is good or is correct, right? So, but if, according to right now, the turbine is parallel with the side of the fuselage or the turbine is parallel, perpendicular, sorry, with the back of the fuselage. So with that being there, now if I take this carbon rod, put it on the... Uh, the side of the turbine and just look down the engine rails. We're close. Pretty stinking close on that side. And we are good on that side. So 
That worked out well. I mean, in this, in this case, we had two reference points. We used the engine rails, we used the back of the fuselage with the exhaust cone, and that worked out good. So what I'm gonna do now is, uh, so all I'm doing in this case now is, you know, we've got this engine mounted in a good spot. Um, I just am going to use my drill with an extension, and I'm gonna do this back one next over here. And uh, keeping in mind that I wanna keep this part of the, uh, the engine tucked all the way back. Now I do have some play because I created these little slots, same type of thing as was done previously underneath here. So we had some play for the bolts and washers and stuff. So I'm gonna get those holes drilled and uh, we'll see what it looks like at the end. All right guys, engine is installed. Uh, it's nice and solid, extremely solid. And uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the engine out, put some CA in those screws and uh, then we'll reinstall the engine and we'll be good.